The huge craft retailer Michaels put out a trend report at the end of last year predicting that 2022 will be the year of mindful crafting. After seeing their list of eight predictions, I thought it'd be fun to create my own predictions for trends in the junk journal community that I foresee popping up on Instagram, Pinterest, and even here on YouTube. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Bree from 1134 Press where we share bookmaking, journaling, and papercraft inspiration to help you document your life. I'll also, my finger is still in this splint, so I can't do my normal crafting video. But let's start by unpacking what mindful crafting is. So Andrea Manning, Senior Director of Trend Design and Packaging at Michaels said, in 2022, we expect to see new and experienced makers alike continue to practice mindful making. The idea of using arts and crafts to relax and find calm. We'll see them applying what they learned last year and expanding creatively into new materials and aspirational themes, more sustainable ways of crafting, and to use making to connect with loved ones in new and meaningful ways. The idea of mindful crafting isn't revolutionary to creative journalers. Using our journals as a tool for mindfulness is like, kind of our thing. And the essence of junk journaling is about repurposing and reclaiming materials to create new art. And often we are creating art to share and connect with others. However, I do think it's awesome that a big mega crafting chain is trying to make this idea of mindful crafting a mainstream one. So with this in mind, I believe we'll start seeing trends in techniques, materials, and types of projects that we create, along with themes and aesthetics. I want to add a disclaimer that obviously these are my opinions and the things that I mentioned here may be things you've already seen um, or are things that you've been doing forever. However, I do believe these are aspects of the craft that will be impossible to avoid seeing on your timeline. So let's jump into the first trend. My first prediction is that we are going to start seeing the atmospheric photo album. I believe that we're going to start seeing a lot more photography in our journal spreads. They will be more abstract and scenic photos that capture a time in place and evoke emotion. With the rise of liminal space photography, the accessibility of pocket photo printers will start seeing vibey images of the places we've been and the people that we love. I can't tell you how many reels I've seen of empty streets, window seat train rides, and other atmospheric scenes with dreamy music. Obviously, we can't journal with video, but we can paste together a memory with images. So clear out some space on your phone and start snapping some photos. Number two on my trends list is the traveler's notebook that actually travels. It's hard for me to do the style of journaling that I like when I'm traveling. Fitting a basket of paper scraps onto a carry-on is not feasible. However, I believe that we're going to start seeing a lot more videos and images of traveling ephemera kits and hacks on how to transport the essentials, especially now that traveling is becoming a lot more safer and more countries are opening up their borders. I'm predicting that there will be a new crop of gorgeous accessory bags that you can house your pins, glue, and washi and traveler notebooks books. Leather workers on Etsy will be busting their tails to create the perfect accessory to accompany you on your next vacation. In addition to this, I think we're going to start seeing people collaging more with business cards, restaurant menus, and other daily ephemera that they collect on their travels. Number three on the list is embroidery on everything. I don't think idolizing slow living and cottagecore as an aesthetic and subculture is going anywhere in 2022. And the skills that we learned while being homebound for two years are also here to stay just in a more refined and elevated way. With that being said, we'll see more hand stitching and embroidery used on journal cover designs and incorporated in our pages. I also think we'll start seeing more fabric and soft textiles used for pages and embellishments. Number four on my predictions list is that we're gonna start seeing more junk journals made for newbies. A great deal of my subscribers on this channel are new to junk journaling, or at least they were new a year or two ago, and they have been bitten by the junk journal bug. Like we just can't stop making these things. And there are only so many journals that we can fill up on our own. So I think we're going to start seeing a trend of people making journals for their family and friends that may have never heard of junk journals before. So I think what that means is we'll start seeing more minimalist journals, pages that aren't bursting at the seams with clusters and 10 interactive elements on the page, maybe an embellished paper clip here and there, a little stitch and stamp in the corner. 
journals that aren't meant to overwhelm the newbie, but inspire them to dip their toes into the water. Number five on my list is the Naturalista. We were all in on incorporating dried flowers in our journal projects last year. We casted them in resin, wax seal, taped them directly onto the page, mixed them in our handmade paper batches. This, my friends, isn't going anywhere this year. However, I do foresee us incorporating different natural elements within our journal projects. We'll start seeing twigs and rocks and crystals. I'm predicting or at least hoping that we'll see innovation in how to incorporate irregular shapes within our books assemblage covers, cutouts, stone covers, charms. I don't think the naturalista will be satisfied with just flowers in 2022. They will find a way. Number six on my list is personalized ephemera. Your happy meals are about to get a lot more personalized. I mentioned this earlier in that pocket printers are becoming a lot more accessible, but there are also innovations in technologies and tools to create your own washies, stamps, stickers, and so forth. In addition to that, creative journalers are becoming more hip to creating digital files of ephemera. There are more searches for how to create printables than ever before, and there are so many tutorials popping up by journal artists about how to use free design software like Canva to make designs. I predict that in 2022, we'll start seeing very unique and personalized ephemera popping up in people's journals that will look like they just picked it up from a craft store. In 2022, you will see a doubling down on sustainability. We made a lot last year, and our supplies are dwindling. Who am I kidding? Our supplies are not dwindling. What I mean to say is that we want new stuff to incorporate in our craft stash. And I think we're gonna start looking for more sustainable options to replenish what we already own. So what I believe that means is we're gonna be taking more trips to thrift stores, um, ravaging our closets and digging through our kitchen junk drawers to get materials outside of actually going to the craft store. I think we're also going to start seeing a trend of repurposing old or unfinished projects to create new projects. I think we'll also be engaging in more swapping with fellow crafters and sharing happy meals. You probably won't use those hologram pizza stickers, but someone else might. And meeting up is becoming a lot more safe. So there'll be plenty of opportunities to do some resource sharing in 2022. And last on my trends list is that machines aren't going anywhere. I believe we're going to start seeing more of this bleed into the junk journal community and in innovative ways. I thought it was important to add this to the list as its own separate trend because the lines between analog crafting and digital have become so blurred in the past few years. I believe we'll continue to see these gadgets incorporated and see ways with the advancements in the technology and user-friendly improvements. So let me know in the comments if you foresee a different kind of trend popping up in 2022 or if there's one that you are particularly excited about that I mentioned in this video. I want to say a special thank you to all of the supporters on Buy Me A Coffee as well as everyone who has liked, shared, commented, subscribed to help grow this little corner of the internet. And with that said, I will see you in the next video. Bye.